Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Soso Toys Green Vigilante. AKA, of course, Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow from the CW TV series. Now, I personally am really excited. For those of you who don't know, I'm a huge fan of Arrow, specifically the first couple of seasons. It starts to, in my opinion, decline in quality after those first few seasons, but nevertheless, this is my first Arrow figure in 1-6 scale, so yeah, I'm super excited to open him up. Now, if you are looking to pick this guy up, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have included the link in the description below for your reference purposes only, because bear in mind, it is an unlicensed product. What we are going to do now, though, is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here, of course, we have the box art for the Green Vigil. Galanti. So So Toys always blows it out of the water when it comes to the box artwork, and they've done the same thing here. We of course have an image of Oliver Queen in his season 5 suit, but this time not wearing the hood or the mask. I really like that piece of box artwork. Green Vigilante on the side, and a whole bunch of legal information on the back. Now on the inside we do have another image of the arrow, but this time he has his hood and his mask on. You also get a little Note here, just letting you know that when you are putting the harness on the figure, to make sure you thread it underneath these straps. It's the byproduct of a really interesting costume design element that is accurate to the show. Now, as I said, this is the season 5 version of the suit, which for me is my personal favorite. I love the look of this suit. I am curious to see if they will be doing any of the other season suits, but for now, this one will serve as my arrow on display. And I have to say, first in-hand impressions are pretty darn positive. I'm already noticing one key thing, which I'm a huge fan of. Now, as you can see, he does come with one and two trays, and a whole heck ton of arrows. So what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box, and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all the bits and pieces that come with Arrow. And I have to say, it is a fairly decent spread. Let's start off by taking a look at the display base first. It's the usual so-so toy style, and I love it. It is a nice, thick, chonky base, the Green Arrow logo, with a little bit of a blood splatter over the top there. You can also see a nice gradation to the green in the grate. It's not just a flat green, it's a little bit of black that's been airbrushed over the top. Now, of course, this wouldn't be Green Arrow without the inclusion of his trusty bow. And this one does have a real elastic string on the back, and it's also painted and detailed really, really nicely. It does have rivets in all the right places, and a little bit of a wash in the crevices there. Now, he does come with his mask. You can place this on the figure, but before you do that, I would recommend placing the little plug in the hole a couple of times, just so you stretch out that piece there and make it a little bit easier for yourself when you are trying to put it on the figure. He does come with some teeny tiny baggies of accessories. These are mini darts that actually store on the figure. You get some of the smaller ones, and you also get an array of the longer ones, as you can see right here. They actually go in little holsters on the figure itself, so bringing out the green arrow, these longer ones go on this side, and the shorter ones actually store on the other side, so do make sure you are getting it accurate to the show when you are assembling your figure. You also get another little baggie of these accessories. I do believe these are little smoke pellets, but if I'm wrong, correct me down below. These actually get stored in the quiver. On these little sections over the front shoulder straps, you slot them in. Don't worry, you'll see all of this on the figure when we take a look at him. 
Now these arrows are the ones with arrowheads. You get an array of these. They are very sharp, so do be careful not to prick yourself, and they are accurate to real life arrows, all the way down to the little slot section on the back to interact with the string on the bow. Now those ones are meant for posing. You also get these ones without the arrowheads attached. These are actually just meant to be stored in the quiver and not taken out for display or posing. They're literally just for the quiver. I got two spare with mine, but basically you slot them in and then combine it to make the completed quiver. Super simple, but yes, those do not have arrowheads, so of course you wouldn't use them to display with your arrow. You also get an array of hands, plus the ones that are required to hold the bow and arrow correctly. I love the detailing here. You do have this arrowhead style pattern on the back, and they are painted relatively well. Now don't forget, when you are assembling the harness, it does go underneath the straps on the outfit, and they clearly indicate that on this instruction sheet. What we are going to do now though, is get the arrow himself out here, and take a closer look. And here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Although he is fully kitted out with all of the darts, all of the little dongles that go on his harnesses, and the quiver on the back, because I had to complete the look. This guy looks phenomenal. I am super impressed with this figure. There is deceptively a lot going on here, because at first glance you might think, oh yeah, it's a relatively simple design, it's a dude in a green pleather suit. But no, there's much more to look at here, and when we zoom in you'll see what I'm talking about. Overall though, I like the head sculpt, I love the outfit, the articulation is relatively on point, and you'll see when we get to that, plus the accessories are fantastic. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. Right off the bat, yeah, Soso -so Toys did not fail this collector. I am super impressed with the head sculpt. While it's not 125% bang on to Stephen Amell, I can still tell exactly who this is supposed to be. And don't worry, in just a second we will pop the hood up and put the mask on, which in my opinion is the ultimate way to display the arrow, it just brings the entire thing to life. But yes, the sculpt is on point, in my opinion, it does have a really good level of skin texture and paint application over the top to match, and the eyes look suitably realistic. Overall, I'm really impressed with the sculpt. But as I said, just wait for that mask to go on, it looks even better. Now I have fully assembled the outfit. Do make sure that the straps go underneath these sections and you can install these little segments all the way around. They are actually all different, which I didn't notice at the time. But yes, sure enough, they are a bunch of different pieces, which leads me to believe that they are arrowheads. Could be wrong once again, if you do know, let me know down below. The quiver is now installed in the back, and it is suitably full of arrows. That's a really nice array there. One other thing to note is these little silver sections are adhered to the outfit. You do get a bunch spare, but just be careful when you're handling him not to rub these overly hard, because yes, they could potentially come away. There is a real working zipper down the front, and I'm pretty sure he has just a black undershirt underneath there. Now, the jacket and the pants. These look absolutely stunning. There are a bunch of different styles of material. Of course, being a TV show, we spend a little bit more time looking at this suit other than a one or two hour feature length film. So they have to make it visually interesting and appealing because we're going to see it for maybe even 18 plus hours, especially when you get to 23 episode length series such as Arrow. Therefore, there is a lot going on. There is mesh sections, there are black sections, there is these pleathery green sections, there's different sections on the back for his elbows. There is so much going on here. I can honestly say that Soso -So Toys nailed it, but I don't know what kind of figure hell they had to go through to make this darn thing happen. Because holding it in hand, it looks really seamless and awesome. 
But in reality, there is so much going on, and yeah, they nailed it. Coming down to the pants, you can see these various pieces that have this stretchy style spandex, and yes, that is in the knees as well, so it sort of expands when you bend the joints. It's a really nice touch. I have also installed the mini darts on the left and the big darts on the right, but then again, you can mess around with the configuration if you'd like them in different patterns. Coming down to the boots, they are very simple, but they are a split-cut boot design, which means, yeah, you get an absolutely insane range of motion while still maintaining a relatively seamless look to the boots, plus a really good level of detail around the edge, but a very simple, clean sole underneath. However, I know I've hyped up the look with the mask and the hood, so without further ado, let's put them on. And here we have him wearing his hood and his mask. And as I said, I think it improves the likeness. This is how I'm going to be having mine in the cabinet. Now, another cool thing is the fact that there are wires throughout the entire hood. So you can shape it and get it to sit the way you want it to. On mine, it is sitting up a little bit high right now. But if you spend a little bit of time messing around with the wires, you can get it to look even better. It also has a little bit of an arrowhead detail symbol on the side, which is a nice touch. Overall, yeah, I'm super impressed with this figure. So, so toys, you've done it again. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Green Arrow on the left, and of course the So So Toys version of the Flash from Season 1 on the right. Now I chose him specifically because he's also from the CW universe, but this should give you an idea of what the Arrow will look like alongside your Hot Toys Flash, because of course it's the only figure that they've announced from the CW-verse. And, yeah, they look fantastic standing side by side. So So Toys is also working on a Batwoman, as well as, obviously, a couple of other companies are as well, but I'm hoping they eventually get around to doing a Superman and a bunch more characters from the CW-verse, because even though the shows might be a little bit peculiar, they do have some amazing costume designs, and in figure format, I think they work really well. Just going over articulation on the arrow. Now, bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Also, these little silver buttons are just adhered on there, so they may fall off if you get a little bit too vigorous with your posing. Now, as for the head sculpt, it is on a fixed neck, and as you can see, it does get a fairly decent range of motion in pretty much all directions. The arms themselves will come up to about there. They will go forward the full way on soft ratchets. There is a butterfly joint at the shoulder, a swivel as well, double bend at the elbow, and of course, a 1 6 scale style wrist peg. As for the torso, there is crunch, forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs themselves are a little bit more restricted, going forward to about there. They go out to about there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend on ratchets at the knee, and of course, a split cut boot design with a ball joint. Just wrapping up on the Soso -So Toys Green Arrow. I didn't know how much the collection was missing a Green Arrow figure until I got this guy. This guy is fantastic. I am super impressed with some very key elements here. Number one, the head sculpt. I love it. I think it's on point. I see Stephen Amell slash, of course, Oliver Queen. And when you put the mask on, it looks even better. The articulation is great. You do have a double bend at the elbows to get that nice bow and arrow holding pose. Whereas some Hot Toys Hawkeye figures come with single jointed elbows, which is a huge oversight. This guy definitely does not have that issue. Then you take into account the amazing outfit. There is a lot going on here. There are a bunch of different mesh panels and different styles and textures of materials here and different colors. And it all comes together perfectly to recreate the season five appearance for Arrow here. And I love it. Yeah, this figure might just be in my top five for third party releases so far this year. 
Now, if you are looking to get this, I do believe you can buy it from toyswonderland.com. The link is down in the description below. That's where I happen to get mine for my own personal collection, because do bear in mind, it is third party and it is unlicensed. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.